So, you know, I mentioned you that I will talk about inflammation. Something that I've been working on it for last 40 years. And I happen to discover a molecule that causes inflammation. And uh, so this is uh, when I was with a company called Genentech. Okay. Okay. So turn out this inflammation is very closely linked to cancer. And uh, what I'm going to tell you that most chronic diseases known to man, including cancer, is caused by inflammation. So if you can control inflammation, you can control cancer and various other diseases. Clear? Yeah. So, so that is where I gave the title, Targeting Inflammatory Pathways Linked to Cancer by Agent Designed by Mother Nature. And uh, Food as Medicine. So having said that, I just came up with another talk, another title, that inflammation, spices, Ayurveda, and chronic diseases. How are they linked? So this is another title that I've been using a lot, but basically the message is the same, that inflammation causes various chronic diseases. And if you can control inflammation, you can control the chronic diseases. And there's no better way to control it than spices and Ayurveda. So it just so happened, there is a whole issue of science devoted to nothing but inflammation. And this is an issue from 2013. And there you can see from the titles that several age-related chronic diseases, such as metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative diseases, they all have been linked to inflammation, okay? And then it just so happened that November 26, 2021, the whole issue of science again is devoted to inflammation. So I'm trying, and even it just so happened that it, even everything that coronavirus does, and we are living in the days of coronavirus, everything coronavirus does is through inflammation. And uh, we have written an article where uh, uh, how you can control inflammation or how you can control the coronavirus uh, through uh, spices. And, it, and also because of the coronavirus, everybody is very isolated. And it just so happened that January 12th, 2022 issue of CNN news is about inflammation. So men living alone, are at greater risk because of coronavirus. Everybody is very lonely. So even that those men are greater risk at inflammation, as study says. So again, trying to I'm trying to convince you that inflammation plays a very important role. And as I mentioned, that even this coronavirus uh, is working through inflammation. And here we wrote an article that COVID nineteen cytokine inflammation and spices, how are they related? So if anybody is interested in any of these articles, I will be glad to send it to them. So, so I'm basically giving you the headlines and most of my talk is just the headlines. And if everybody understood it and they want more articles, I will be glad to share with them. And I happen to have a website called bbagarwal.com and that has listed all the articles and they are available there. So working hypothesis, dysregulated chronic inflammation caused by lifestyle factors, and is about lifestyle, immediate chronic diseases, including cancer, okay? So, however, we are living in an era where everything is pharmaceutical. And uh, pharmaceutical came along around 1960. And whenever you go to a doctor, they will give you pharmaceutical drugs. And here I just want to give you the headline that appeared in a journal called Cell, which is most prestigious. And it appeared in 2017. 
that of the 91 new therapies approved by solid tumor between 2002 and 2016, the median overall survival benefit is only two months. So all the drugs given by pharmaceutical companies are not working. Only two months increase in lifespan and it costs more than $100,000. Is that a solution to cancer? Definitely not. But that is what all the doctors push it and that is not in your favor. So if you knew all about that. So you happen to come from India and I happen to come from India. And as you know, my name is Bharat, which means India. And if we look at the global incidence of cancer, no country has more cancer than America, as shown here in the red. And India has the lowest incidence of cancer, as shown here in the white. But as India is becoming more and more Americanized, the cancer is going up and up and up in India. And that's not good. So the American lifestyle is a pro-cancerous. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. And here you can see the whole chart and everything that is in it. So, and then with the time, the cancer is going up and up and up. And here you can see the global cancer incidence in 2002, 2020, and 2030. And what is shown in yellow is the total number of cancer cases. And what is shown in red is a cancer death. And as you can see, it is going up and up and up. And that's not good either. So neutralizing tumor promoting chronic inflammation is a magic bullet. And this is an article that appeared in Science and I wanted to share with you. And uh, it is not by me, but by my colleague, Lisa Cousin and from UCSF. And the whole idea is again, inflammation. And then it just happened to be one of my col colleagues, Sunil Pai, and he wrote a whole book and I forwarded this book and it is Inflammation Nation. And that's what America is all about. And with the, with the you know, review by Andrew Vale, which you might have heard of by myself and by Deepak Chopra. You might have heard of Deepak Chopra. These are some of the big guys in, uh, in natural products. So, and then again, here you can see the inflame, the inflammation means inflame, the fire. So the whole issue of immunity is about inflammation. And Time Magazine, the secret killer is inflammation. And as you can see that uh, inflammation uh, and heart attack, cancer, Alzheimer, you name it. And as you know, Alzheimer is going up and up. And here is inflammation, the fires within, meaning as they are burning, and you can see the all shown in red is the fires. And as fire burn, it leads to all chronic disease. So fire is not bad because Agni Devta is, is, uh, is supposed to be good if it is kept under control. If it is out of control, it is bad. So here you have a fire in the kitchen, you have a fire in the living room, you have a fire in the bedroom, everything is fine. But here that same fire out of control, you can see everything burns everything down. And you want to keep this fire under control. So inflammation, a double-edged sword for cancer and other age-related diseases. So we wrote another article. This means that one edge of the sword is good for you, other edge of the sword is bad for you. So, so you have to, uh, that's what this article is all about. So where this inflammation is coming from? Cigarette smoking. One third of all cancer is due to cigarette smoking. Radiation and alcohol the diet, obesity, that is all inflammation. So SAD is fad. SAD means standard American diet. Okay, and I be, happen to be in America. And so, so that is what the fad is. And this is what standard American diet looks like. Okay, and this is again, an article appeared in New York Times, and that's where I took it from. And, I'm sorry. I have learned a new word today. Yes. Yeah. So, so now you know what it means. Standard American diet. Sad. So potential sources of inflammation. Environmental pollutants, food factors, bacteria, viruses, cigarette smoke, stress. 
people are more under stress now than ever before. Okay. And so hypoxia, heavy metal, chemotherapy, which is used for treating patients, they all lead to inflammation, ultraviolet radiation, alcoholic beverage. So these are all the sources of inflammation. So we wrote a whole article for Nature on inflammation, the TNF superfamily. If anybody is interested, can look it up. I'm just giving you some references. So cancer is a preventable disease that requires major change in lifestyle. And here is a tobacco, one third of all cancer due to tobacco, and one third are due to diet, 35%. And here is obesity, 14 to 20%, infection, 18%, environmental pollution, 7%, and genes are only 5 to 10%, genes that we inherit. So 90 to 95% of all cancers is due to lifestyle. So it was this guy who introduced the word for inflammation. His name is Rudolf Warshaw. And he was from Germany. And in 1850, he introduced, he linked the inflammation with the various chronic diseases. And he's from Würzburg, Germany. So he linked the inflammation with atherosclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, cancer, asthma, Alzheimer's, just to give you a history. And he also introduced the word for inflammation called ETs. So somebody says, I have arthritis, means inflammation of the joints. Bronchitis, inflammation of the bronchus. Sinusitis. So wherever this ETs appears, it means inflammation. And now there are over 200 different ETs. And I have listed all of them over here. These are inflammation of the various organs. So here is a Japan has a one of the lowest incidence of ETs, 7.9 per 100,000. India is in the middle and US is the highest amount of this inflammation, okay? So here is a various agents that are causing inflammation that lead to ETs and that lead to various cancers and various other diseases. So uh, there is a, a molecule called NF-kappa-B, which is a, is a mediator of inflammation. It is a transcription factor and it causes most chronic diseases. And if you are to inhibit this uh, NF-kappa-B, you can prevent and delay the onset of chronic disease. And I'm going to show you how that. So these are all the various diseases where inflammation has been linked with and uh, through NF-kappa-B. So here I, we discovered a molecule called TNF. So TNF causes activation of NF-kappa-B that lead to IL-6, STAT-3, and that lead to bone loss, invasion metastasis, angiogenesis, proliferation, and survival. And all of that is inflammation. So here is a chemotherapy causing inflammation, NF-kappa-B, radiation causing NF-kappa-B, and this is, these are some of the standard ways to block it. So here you have a tobacco-linked cancer, you have a carcinogen-induced cancer, and here you have a virus-induced cancer, they're all linked with inflammation. So wherever I talk about inflammation, it is, means NF-kappa-B. So NF-kappa B addiction and its role in cancer, one side does not fit all. And this is another review, anybody can re read it up. And here is all these genes that are regulated by inflammation. So I just listed some of them. And here that uh, most cancer, they start at the age of 20 and they are manifested uh, at the age of 40 to 50. And then they become uh, metastasized uh, 10 years later. And these are all the various cancers and all the various diseases that have been linked with inflammation. And cigarette smoking, as I mentioned, causes inflammation. And here is provided the mechanism. Obesity is due to inflammation. And here, which is linked to various cancers. Here, I have listed all of them. So NF-kappa B, which causes inflammation, is the enemy within us. And it can be a friend if it remains in the immune system, but it becomes a foe the moment it gets out of the immune system. So NF-kappa B means inflammation in cancer in matter of life. Death. So here, a lot of people are under stress now than ever before. So here, the stress leads to an kappa B, which leads to inflammation, which leads to cancer. So a fire. So what we need to block inflammation, we need a fire extinguisher, which means to block inflammation, which means to block an kappa B. So here is whole issue of science again that how to block inflammation, these are all fruits and vegetables. So these are the various ways, steroids, NSAIDs, Celebrex, metformin, statin, these are all to block inflammation. Here is the aspirin, I'm sure you know that block inflammation, steroids, statins, metformin, block inflammation. And here is a guy that which not very many people know, his name is Subarao. And he is, was the first one to discover a molecule 
for cancer. And I have listed over here. And here is another one, Surinder Sagal. And here is a Mansukwani who just passed, uh, passed away just only a few months ago. And he was the one to discover some of the anti-cancer drugs. So here, just to show you where some of these drugs are coming from, here I listed the name of the plant. And here, cancer drug discovery for repurposing, teaching new tricks to old dogs. And so we are on the cover. This is our article that if anybody is interested, can look it up. And here is aspirin, how it's working to block inflammation. And aspirin and cancer, metformin and cancer, statin and cancer. So to treat and prevent most chronic diseases, we need to dial down but not turn off multiple, but not single gene. So Sloan School of Management at MIT, Harvard Business School has created what we call farmer's market, but what we need is a farmer's market. So to block inflammation, we need all the spices. We need all the Ayurveda, and that is what is farmer's market. And I'm gonna show you how it does that. And here is a quote coming from New York Times, okay? So, and this is nothing new because Hippocrates proclaimed 25 centuries ago, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And that's what we are talking about. And so here is Hippocrates' oath in fifth century BC and that I have listed over here. And he proclaimed 25 centuries ago that uh, Hippocratic oath has morphed into hypocritical oath. First do no harm and has become make more money. And that's the name of the game. And so when I say farmer's market, and these are all the fruits and vegetables. So we have identified this and a lot of them block inflammation. And here are more farmer's market. So we have identified and that they, they all block inflammation. And here is the more. So, so this is what is called food as medicine. Okay, so we have identified the active components and I'm going to show you some of them that block inflammation. So here is a walnut, kidney bean, soybean oil, avocado, flaxseed. So all these are familiar to you. And there is an active compound called omega-3. And omega-3 blocks inflammation. And here is a more farmer's market. And here to reduce your risk of cancer by 30 to 40% by eating habits. And, and here is a, when solution is simple, God is answering, Albert Einstein. So very simple solution. And that is food. And same thing with Ayurveda. And you are very familiar with Ayurveda, which is a science of long life. And it goes back 5000 BCE. And Ayurveda consists of Chark Samhita, Sushil Samhita, and Bela Samhita. And so here is the you know, professor, you know, a rishi, a saint, sitting there and teaching his students about Ayurveda. So we wrote an article from ancient medicine to modern medicine, Ayurvedic concept of health and their role in inflammation and cancer. And if anybody's interested, I will be happy to share with them. So according to Ayurveda, all the diseases are controlled by Patta, Vitta, Kapha. And so it is an imbalance between these three that lead to the origin of the disease. And here I have listed sofa is the name for inflammation in Ayurveda. So I have listed all this over here. And this is where this uh, inflammation is coming from. And again, I won't go too much into detail. And this is chikitsa, the treatment, that Ayurvedic treatment. And according to Ayurveda, you use herbs, you use prayers, aromatherapy, uh, you know, yoga, dietary, meditation, and all these are listed in Ayurveda. So cancer drug discovery from Ayurveda, again, another article. And drug discovery from Ayurveda, these are all the drugs that I mentioned that some of them discovered in India are coming from Ayurveda. More herbs and coming from Ayurveda. And so we have a whole article from traditional Ayurvedic medicine to modern medicine. Identification of therapy target for suppression of inflammation and cancer. Okay. So this is what is called golden triangle. You have a modern technology, you have a traditional knowledge, you have modern knowledge, and you can combine all together. And here is a something called umbilica officinalis amla, you know, which uh, I'm sure you are familiar with. It is called Indian gooseberry. Mm -hmm. And we identify the compound from amla that can block inflammation. And here are the papers published. And here is identification anti-inflammatory agent from Ayurvedic medicine and reverse pharmacology. So, so go and 
another uh, ayurvedic herb is called google googling the google okay for prevention of cancer and various chronic diseases and again this is the, what google looks like and here is the active compound and here that how it works in blocking inflammation so we have published a paper anybody can look it up we provide reference and the active compound is called google steroid blocking inflammation so here is another one called frank incense called boswellia serrata and the active compound is this salai google and here i mentioned the structure again block inflammation here is ashwagandha ashwa means horse gandha means smell it smells like a horse and calvithania somnifera and we, these are the active compound and again block inflammation here is a you have a round pepper and here is a black pepper a uh, long pepper and this is what it looks like the paper published in nature that again block inflammation and here we provided the whole mechanism and so immuno nutrition we have a whole book if anybody is interested can look it up again how to control inflammation so it is by me and david heber who is from ucla and so the word pharmaceutical now it pharmaceutical which means farmers market okay and so these are all the various anti inflammatory lifestyle that here i listed over here and here are the active compounds and inflammation lifestyle chronic disease is silent link that we have another book if anybody is interested can look it up and here is a resveratrol so people who like to drink red wine they think of resveratrol and that red, red wine comes from red grapes but that's not the only source so we have a whole bunch of sources of resveratrol and it blocks inflammation and here is indole 3 carbinol again blocks inflammation and here is a neem neem is a tree that come from india it called azadi raktika indica azadi means freedom drakt means tree tree that gives you freedom from all diseases is called neem and again nimbolide it is works blocking inflammation and here is again another paper on neem blocking inflammation and here is a tocotrienol which is another one so everybody heard of vitamin e and this is another compound very similar to vitamin e called tocotrienol and it is coming from palm rice barley oat wheat it all blocks inflammation and here are various sources and how much it is i listed and here it is showing published paper that blocks inflammation so if it blocks inflammation does it cure cancer and here we published a paper on that one that yes it will cure cancer and here is the evidence and from exotic spice to modern drugs and here is an article that appeared in cell that the global demand for more affordable therapeutic and concerns about side effects of commonly used drugs are refocusing interest on eastern traditional medicine particularly those from india and china okay so chronic diseases inflammation and spices how are they linked so these are the spices as you know vasco de gama and christopher columbus and uh, there is another guy jose cabarillo who lives here who lived here in san diego and he started san diego and all these three guys were looking for spices and that is what they called spice route i listed over here and, and this is way back 1498 and these are the spices what they were looking for so even they knew what spices were good for so we have a whole book on healing spices so there are 50 different spices so how they can block inflammation and cure various diseases so it is all listed in there another one molecular target therapeutic uses of spices and this is another book so add spice to your life curry in hari spice it up spice queen spice goddess these are the names now used very often so much so that most of the names of the western women american women are named after spices like anus ginger rosemary mace pepper basil tulsi sage jasmine angelica curry chili tamarind these are all names of women at least in america i don't know about portugal but at least in america women are named like after spices so here is a dietary nutraceutical as a backbone for bone health and healing with spices as i mentioned and these are all the different spices more spices you know so here we showed that how it works and one in particular is curcumin curcumin is the yellow color in turmeric okay and here we provided all the mechanisms and so forth and again uh, nutraceutical derived from dietary spices how they control inflammation 
all listed here. And these are the spices what we are talking about. Turmeric, fennel, red chili, cloves, fenugreek, holy basil. And here is a red chili we are blocking, showing how it blocks inflammation. Ginger, how it blocks inflammation. Ginger, how it prevents bone loss. And here is a black cumin, how it blocks inflammation. Here is a fenugreek, how it blocks inflammation. Here is a fennel, how it blocks inflammation. Here is a black pepper, how it blocks inflammation. Here is a cardamom how it blocks inflammation, and here is a cardamom, how it blocks bone loss, it's curcumin getting back to our roots. So this is the curcumin, which is the yellow color in turmeric, as I mentioned, and these are the roots, and this is what leads, leads to this. And here we are on the cover of pharmacology of uh, curcumin. And you can see in the south, you know, curcumin is used, uh, you know, not only, so it is antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, antitermite, and here they are used even for the decoration here that uh, in the south. So if we provided all this stuff uh, here uh, that how curcumin blocks inflammation. So just like a Vishnu Sasanam, there's a curcumin Sasanam. These are all the different names of turmeric in Sanskrit. So each one of the name tells us something what they do. You know, if somebody says, you know, rubber gavasa, rubber means fat, gavasa, it is anti-obesity. Madhu Nashani, Madhu means sugar, Nashani means destroys. So these are all the names of turmeric. And these are the, what in different languages that what turmeric is called. So here is a turmeric, the golden spice from traditional medicine to modern medicine. And here, there are 200 different kinds of turmeric. So I listed all of them over here. So here, most people, when you talk about turmeric, you see yellow, but then there is a white turmeric. And I was in, uh, in uh, Thailand, uh, there's a black turmeric, you know, I saw there and so forth. So this is where it was, how it was discovered and first paper ever to be published in 1949 in Nature as an antibacterial agent. So you can very well imagine it is listed right here. And this is where it comes from, and curcumin, which is the yellow color, and here this is 25 gram of turmeric has a half a gram of this. Johnson and Johnson has made even a, a bandaid that uh, as I was growing up, you know, if we get hurt, the first thing your mother will apply is turmeric, and that will block all the uh, wo uh, wound uh, uh, bleeding and so forth. And so Johnson and Johnson made a bandaid. So this is the antibacterial, the first paper published in Nature, toxicity of termic extract in termite. So it is anti-termite and anti-inflammatory and antiviral. And so I'm trying to quickly try to provide you the insight so that if anybody is interested, can look it up. Here is anti-inflammatory and all the genes that are associated. Here is all the different cancers it has been shown to work and all the different targets and more target where it physically binds to is indicated over here and TNF blocker and inflammatory lifestyle. And they have, this is approved by the FDA that TNF blockers with a market over $20 billion a year. And, and turmeric can do the same thing. And here is what they are used for. And uh, so I'm not going to go through. So it is orally bioavailable. There's no problem at all. And here is the clinical trial. There are now 600 clinical trials that have been done. So I won't have the time to go through all of them. But here, just to show you one that came from Hyderabad, 21 patients here and 23 patients here, 150 milligram twice a day, it completely down-modulated uh, inflammatory biomarker. So these are some more data along the same line. Therapeutic use is a role of current curcumin lesson to be learned from clinical trials. Again, we've done a lot of reviews. And here, just to show you that uh, who that uh, uh, published all the papers on this, and this is a uh, way, way, way back then. History goes way back in 1937. So curcumin bioavailability, how big is a problem? Is curcumin bioavailability a problem in human? Lots of people think it is, and but I'm trying to show you that it is not, and we published quite extensively. Here it is ending up in different organs. And I was uh, gave a talk in, uh, in Poland, and there, uh, uh, this is Sofia, Bulgaria, and you can see that a guy came to me and showed me this, uh, his data that where he's applying topically and you can see he can induce the wound healing. And so it is works for psoriasis. There is a woman in Los Angeles and she apparently applying topically and it, she changed the name of turmeric to Soria Gold. 
And here are all the effects that are shown. Uvitis is another one, very serious problem. Again, inflammation, and you can see turmeric will completely block it. So effect of turmeric and you in gut microbiota. And again, there is a paper public turmeric is at least as effective as curcumin for anti-cancer potential. And here are all the uh, different ingredients. And uh, I can quickly run through and uh, just to show you, and this is another compound in turmeric. Here is another one, turmeric and CFT are at least as effective as anti-cancer, curcumin-free turmeric is effective. And uh, my time is running out, so I'm quickly kind of running through this. And this is curcumin versus turmeric side by side. And here are some of the other synergistic action of curcumin with other compounds. And here, just to show you that countries like India, where turmeric is consumed, the incidence of cancer in male versus female. And here, country like US, where spices are not consumed, the incidence of cancer in male versus female. So this is the data that is coming from National Cancer Institute. Okay, so you can see that uh, spices are good for you. And uh, this slide goes on to prove that. And here is cancer by cancer, number of cases, number of deaths in US versus India. And you can see all for yourself. And so, so I think that uh, I do not know about Portugal, but I'm sure that it will not be any different. So spicy approach to cancer treatment, curry compound fight cancer in the clinic. And so we are a scientific American declared as, as a spice healer, you know, and I happen to be in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Turkey and Istanbul. And apparently there I'm standing right here in Istanbul, and apparently there is a whole spice market. And so my wife took my picture. And so in Turkish language, spices means Bharat. Okay, so this Bharat means spices. So, so apparently that is uh, uh, interesting. So Haldi is healthy, another one that li listed over here. And here is everything. It's about turmeric, a lot of publicity. And they opened up a restaurant in, uh, in New York called Haldi. Okay, so that is the name of the restaurant. In Curry Hill, a new kid down the block. They opened up a restaurant in, uh, in uh, Stanford called Turmeric, the Golden Spice. And so now they are making turmeric cookies and lattes and so forth. And this is another book. And these are all the different products that are available out there in the market and so forth. And I want to go through all this. And but this is just to give you. And again, meditation, you know, is very common in India. And here is a worried about inflammation. Here are nine things you can do about it right now. And so these are, I'm just sharing with inflammation with that, I stop right here. And these are the people who have contributed over the years about everything that I talked to you about. And with that, I thank you and for giving me this opportunity to share our stuff with you. And feel free to share these slides with anybody and everybody who's interested. Thank you. Mm -hmm.